Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem transpose matrix. We're given a 2D integer array and we want to return the transpose of that, which if you don't remember like your linear algebra and stuff is pretty simple actually. They even color coded it for us to make it pretty simple. Here you can see we have a square matrix and each row ends up becoming a column sort of. Second row is now the second column, third is the third column, and the order of values of course does matter, that is preserved. So the first one stays here, a second one becomes a second value in the column, third one becomes the third value in the column. So I think that's the simplest way to think about this problem. When they say here, you can think of it as flipping it over, it's main diagonal. What they kind of mean is over this diagonal, each value is kind of being swapped. Like here, it's being swapped with itself, so no change. Here, these two values are swapped. Here, these two values are swapped. The middle one stays the same. These two are swapped as well. And then last one, this stays the same. And if you were to do that, you'd notice that it does end up looking like this. Before I kind of get into how I'm going to solve the problem, one thing to notice is that we're not necessarily going to be given a square matrix every time. The second example kind of illustrates that. So in the second example, which is a bit more interesting, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So basically we were given a two by three matrix. Now the result is a three by two matrix, because again, if you think of it in terms of turning this row into a column, well, of course the column is going to have three values in it. One, two, three. So it's going to be three. And of course, we only have two rows. So we're going to end up having two columns. And then we're going to have the four, five and six here. So just keep that in mind. This is also why we cannot solve this problem in place. Of course, we pretty much have to allocate extra memory, at least in the general case. If we had a square matrix, we might be able to solve it in place, but that's not guaranteed. So don't even worry about trying to save memory. Now, how am I going to solve the problem? Kind of how I drew this out. The first thing we're going to want to do is allocate space. If we have a matrix where we have two rows and three columns, we're going to create a matrix with three columns and two rows. It's going to be empty initially, but that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to traverse the input matrix, pretty much how we usually traverse a matrix, row by row. What are we going to do, though, with every value? We have this value at row zero, column zero. Well, we're going to end up putting it in the new matrix at row zero, column zero. Next, we're going to have this second value at row zero, column one. Where are we going to put it in the second matrix? We're going to put it at row one, column zero. Pretty much the row and the column are swapped. That's literally the main observation you have to make. Next one is going to be the same. This one is at row zero, column two. So we're going to put it at row two, column zero. The same thing with the second row. We're here, row one, column zero. We're going to put it at row zero, column one. Exactly the same with the rest of them. The only thing is we're swapping the row and the column, just like we kind of did when we declared this matrix in the first place. The number of rows and columns are kind of swapped. In terms of time complexity, we know we have to iterate over the input matrix. Let's say it has n rows, m columns. So that is going to be the big O time complexity. In terms of memory, that's also going to be the same n by m. We do have the same number of cells in the output matrix. But in many cases, we don't include the result, the memory that it takes to create like the output. So depending on how you want to think about it, it might also be considered to be constant memory. Let's go ahead and code this up now. So the first thing I like to do with these matrix problems is just get the dimensions. So the number of rows and columns is pretty easy to get. We get the length of the matrix and the length of the first row will give us the number of columns. Then before we even start iterating like with nested loops over the input matrix, which I'm going to do like this, we want to actually declare the result matrix. In Python, it's a little bit different than many languages. Think of it this way. So we are declaring the first row and how many values are going to be in the first row it's going to be the number of rows in the input matrix actually so what we can do in python is multiply this by the number of rows so if we had five rows in the first matrix we are now going to have five columns because the row here has five values therefore it has five columns and how many rows are we going to have in the output matrix 
basically it's going to be the number of columns in the input matrix. So this is one row. How many rows do we want? This many rows. This is called list comprehension in Python. So we're going to do just like this. So for the number of columns we had in the input matrix, that's how many rows we're going to have in the output matrix. And we know that we're going to return the output matrix. So I'm just going to fill that in out here. One last thing for us to do. We are traversing the matrix now, but we're not populating the output matrix. How should we do that? We know if we're at the current row column position, this is the value in the input matrix. Where should we place it in the output matrix pretty much with the coordinates swapped so in the resulting matrix instead of saying row column here we're going to actually swap these two we're going to put column first and then the row second that's all you have to do this is the entire code let's run it to make sure that it works and as you can see on the left yes it does and it's pretty efficient the runtime is kind of random I could run it a couple more times to get the percentage beats higher, but I'm not going to do that. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.